Well, good morning, Hills family, and all of you new folks that, that are joining us today. We're glad you're here. Let me start off by saying happy Mother's Day. We're going to have a great time today. We're going to be honoring our moms. We're going to be worshiping. Matter of fact, the team is doing some final sound check right now before we dive into worship together. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to invite someone right now. Why don't you send them a text or Facebook message or Instagram uh, direct message or whatever you want to do. Tell them to join you for this service because it's going to be great. I'm excited about the word today. Uh, we're going to be continuing on with our series. This is a test. I also want to thank you for those of you that have, have proven faithful in this test by continuing to give. You've been faithful in your giving and, and several of you have moved beyond just giving and moved into generosity which is the opposite of what a lot of people in the world are doing. They're hoarding and they're holding on. So thank you for your giving. I want to encourage you at some point today to give. That's one thing that we can all do together. I hope you're ready to worship today. It's going to be a fun, fun day. Come on, let's head on in here. God bless. great things out together. Come let us worship our King. Come let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. Oh, see what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. You break every chain, oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God, you have done great things.
walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall For you have never failed me For change to come, knowing the battle's won. For you have never failed me yet, and your promise still stands. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. Still in your hands, this is my confidence. You never failed me yet. You never failed me yet. I know the night, come on. I know the night won't last. Your word will come to. I will sing your praise again. My Jesus, you're still enough. Oh, Jesus, you're still enough. Keep me within your love. My heart will sing your praise again. everybody and welcome to the hills at home my name is jared and i'm part of the team here and we are so glad to have you guys with us this morning now if it's your first time with us that is awesome news and we want to connect with you you can even now text to connect you just text the words hills connect to 94090 you'll be sent an online connect card and there you can mark if it's your first time with us or if you have a prayer request or maybe even just some questions about the service today. You can make it known on that card and we would love to connect with you. And wow, you picked an awesome day to be at the Hills because it's Mother's Day 2020. Just a warning, dads and kids out there, if you didn't do anything for your mothers, the stores are probably closed, so you missed the boat this year. But hey, 
364 more days until next Mother's Day, so good luck. But no, it is an awesome day, and we really want to honor our moms out there, our, our Hills mamas, our spiritual mamas, uh, whoever we have. We want, we want to honor you today, even though we can't be together in person. And on that note, we would love to honor you with a gift. You heard me right. So today, today from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. at the Hills new building in Bellevue, not the Knowles Center, not where we traditionally worship together, but at the Hills new building in Bellevue. Hear it again, new building in Bellevue from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Our team will be there to safely, safely hand out Mother's Day gifts. We would love to, to have you. So moms, put the kiddos down for a nap and drive over to the Hills new building in Bellevue from 1 to 2 to get a special Mother's Day treat from the Hills. Now we have another special Mother's Day treat for you. We have our very own Kane in studio today to sing a special tribute song to all the mamas out there. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Kane with Mama's Cooking. Oh, I wish 
a test. This is only a test. Well, once again, we're so glad you're with us today and happy, happy Mother's Day, or should I say Mama's Day. Thank you, Kane. What a great job. Wasn't that good, guys? So good. I can, I can, I can smell Mama's cooking right now, and my mama can cook, I'm going to tell you right now. Well, like Pastor Jared said a moment ago, I know we can't all be together, but we do want to see all of our, our Hills moms today. We would love for you to join Kristen and I and some of our team will be there. We'll be safely distanced from one another. We'll have masks and gloves on. But we do have a special gift for all the moms at the Hills. So I encourage you to come out there today at our new, our new venue, our theater, which you're going to start construction on uh, in just a few days. And come by. You can see the theater. Uh, and, and, and from 1 to 2, 1 to 2, we're going to be there. If you come at 2.15... I'm, I'm taking your prizes, okay? So come on. So we're excited about that. Well, I hope you're ready for the word today because I'm excited about it. Um, we're in a series called This Is a Test. And I want to remind you that we are an engaged and responsive church. So I want you to be engaged wherever you're watching this. You'll hear the crew. They'll amen and laugh. If it's funny, they'll laugh. And nobody's thrown anything yet. So I'm excited. Thank you guys for not throwing anything at me. Uh, but I want you to be engaged today. I want you to lean in. If you take notes, take notes. Amen. Shout hallelujah. Run around, run around the kitchen if you want to, if it gets that good. Don't think it will, but who knows? <laughs> and then give us an amen online, okay? Won't you give us a, go to one of our areas where you can chat and, and let us know that you're watching. And uh, I'm excited, excited. We are in a test, and during this collection of messages, we have found that the purpose of the test is to grow our faith. If you've been with us from the very beginning, you know that we've been reading from Romans 12 and 3 that says God has dealt to each one a measure of faith, which means that everyone is born with the same amount of faith. But our goal in this collection of messages is that we want to grow our faith. We don't want to just stay where we are. We want to grow. One thing we've talked about is that there are four phases to full-grown faith. The first one is belief. The second one is trust. Number three is hope. And number four is full-grown faith. Last week, we discussed trust. You know, I have an idea for a great TV show. I want to ask you, what if you th do you think this would be a good idea for a TV show? All right, now listen. So there are five people that board a boat for a three-hour tour, okay? They get on this boat. They're just going to be on it for three hours. There's a guy, there's the skipper, you know, there's a millionaire. Maybe his wife is there as a movie star, a professor, maybe someone named Martha Ann, you know. And then maybe, I don't know, maybe the lead character's name is Mulligan. All right, so, so but anyway, during this, during this three-hour tour, a storm hits and they get stranded on a deserted island. I think the title of the show should be called Lost. What do you think? We, am I on to anything? Let me ask you a question. What do you do when you find yourself stranded and it was not a mistake? When you trusted someone to lead you and guide you and now you find yourself stranded. There was no crash. There was no storm. There was no wrong turn. You were just led by someone that you placed your trust in. And what if that someone was God? Tell me if this feels right. For those of you that are believers, you have believed in Him. And then you decide that you're going to follow him by placing your trust into him. And then it all starts looking different than you imagined when you first believed. There's no beautiful music bed under you when you give your heart to the Lord. There's no inspiring sermon. The emotions of that first believing, that diving in, the, those are all gone. Well, this is the place called trust. Okay. Oh, wow. And I found in 
many years of ministry that this is where most folks lose it. This is where they give up. This is where they just stay where they are. They say, I can't handle this anymore. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to help you hang on today. For those of you that are in a spot that you feel deserted, it feels dry, you're trying to trust, but trusting, as I said last week, trusting is hard. I want to help you hang on. The way that you survive in the faith, the trust portion of faith is this, by knowing that this is not the final segment in the trip. This is not over. And when you realize that, that, ladies and gentlemen, is when hope happens. And that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about that third phase of faith called hope. Come on, right where you are, would you just raise your hand? Because I can see you. We have new technology. Would you raise your hand and just say, I need some hope today? If you need some hope, just raise your hand. Come on, raise your guinea pig's hand. Raise your cat's hand. Whatever. Do you need a little hope today? Well, I've got good news. Then I've got bad news. The good news is you can have it. The bad news is how you get it. (laughs) Don't tune me out. I want to help you today. A passage that we have read, Romans chapter 5 and 3. We glory in tribulations or trials or troubles, knowing that these tribulations, trials, and troubles produce perseverance, and perseverance, character, and character, hope. Now, I would love for you to turn there. If you don't already have your Bible open, I'd love for you to turn. I just read from the New King James Version. You may, if you're in the NIV or NLT, it may say uh, endurance instead of perseverance. But it's the, same, it's, it's the same idea. Let me say it again. We glory in tribulations. We get excited about trials and troubles. Why? Because, because we know that these tribulations, trials, and troubles produce perseverance. And perseverance, character, and character hope. So in other words... To get hope, you have to have character. You ever been going through a tough time? Or maybe you fell when you were a kid and you bruised your your elbow or hurt your knee and and your dad would go, ah, it builds character. (laughs) I've always wondered why only bad things build character. (laughs) But the scripture tells us if you want hope, you got to get character. Now, I don't know if you use this word in your, in your house. So if, if you don't use a little slang in your house and your kids are there, just cover their ears, cover up their eyes, because it's come on the screen, because I want you to hear this. Character comes from going through crap. Okay. That's how you get character. Not, not, not running through the daisy fields. Going through mess. That's how you get character. I have found that character is all about experience. That's what it is. Character tells you, tells us and tells you who you really are after the testing. So, here is how character develops hope. I've read the scripture before and couldn't quite put my brain around how does character produce hope. Here's how it, here's how it produces hope. You ready? The trouble came. The trouble came. God helped me persevere. I'm better because of the trouble that came. That is character. And then, this mindset, now I know that if God allows trouble in my life, it is for my good. So because of this, I trust Him. And because I trust Him, I'm putting all of my hope in Him. And hope is what helps you lean forward in the times of trust. I want to make something very clear today. There is a difference in hype and hope. Let me say it again. There is a difference in hype and hope. Hype tells you to believe in something that is not there. Hope tells you to believe in something that is definitely there. Romans 5 and 5 tell us that hope does not disappoint. Say it with me. Hope does not disappoint. Come on, right here, guys, in the crew. Everybody say it with me. Hope does not disappoint. So if God has appointed you to something, you can never be unappointed or disappointed from that. So place your hope in what God has planned for you. And you will not be disappointed because you continually go back to that hope that you have placed in Him. You see, we're disappointed. Here's how we're disappointed. When we put our hope in the wrong things. When I put my hope in me. When I put my hope in my talents. When I put my hope in my plans. When I put my hope in other people, when I put my hope in tomorrow, we're not promised tomorrow. Mm -hmm. 
How many of you find yourself putting your hope in temporary things? Right. Like money. Sure. Mm-hmm. Like, like pleasure. 2 Corinthians 4.18 says, So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. They're going to bring this on the screen right now. I want you to see this and hear, hear this. Hope is never about the here and now. Hope is always about the there and the then. That's what hope is. And when you try to bring hope back into right here, it doesn't work that way. Hope is always about moving forward. It's about God has more for us. Yes. Romans 8, 24. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is not hope at all. For who hopes for what he already has? Wow. Hope says there is more than what I see right here, right now. Yes. The writer of Hebrews has just listed all the champions of the faith in Hebrews 11. And I read some of this to you during this series. So he's finished Hebrews 11, and then he moves into Hebrews 12. Remember, he's been talking about all the heroes of the faith. And then he goes into verse 1 of Hebrews 12, and he says this, Therefore, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance, there's that word again, the race marked for us. So he's saying, during this time of testing, during this time of trusting, keep on running. Keep on moving. How? Then he tells us how by pointing to the greatest example of hope that has ever lived. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. How could Jesus endure all of that pain? And they're bringing this on the screen as well. Because Jesus knew that something better was just a few breaths away. And because of that, he could endure the pain. He could push aside the scorn. Let me tell you right where you are. I hope there's hope rising up in you. Don't give up now. I'm believing there's something better just a a few breaths away. Just a few days away. Just a few minutes away. Just a few weeks away. Keep hope alive. Come on, turn to your neighbor and tell them that. Say, keep hope alive. Keep hope alive. You see, hope helps you get through the tough times. And we're in a tough time right now. You need hope. We need hope. We read Hebrews 11 and 13 last week. I want to expand on that just a little bit. Let's, 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 let's read a little bit more. All of these people died still believing what God had promised them. They did not receive what was promised, but they saw it all from a distance and welcomed it. They, they agreed that they were foreigners and nomads here on earth. In other words, they agreed with the fact that they did not belong here. Okay. Obviously, people who say such things are looking forward to a country they can call their own. If they had longed for the country they came from, they could have gone back. This is key. This is key. If they would have longed for the country they came from, they could have gone back. Wow. You, that's why you've got to keep moving forward. Yeah. You've got to believe there's more for you. And it says this, but they were looking for a better place, a heavenly homeland. Wow. This is why God is not ashamed to be called their God, for He has prepared a city for them. Awesome. Wow. You, know what I, you know what I find sad? We don't sing about heaven anymore. We don't write songs about heaven. And it may be because we have it too good here. The old timers sang about heaven a lot because life was rough when they wrote those songs. I believe sometimes God messes up our life so we will say, I don't like this place as much anymore. There's an old song, this world is not my home. I'm just passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. You see, our hope has to be beyond our current situation. Our hope has to be beyond this world. Our hope has to be beyond this life. Did you know that's true even when when I walk with Jesus? 
I believe sometimes we limit Jesus to this life, to this situation, to where we are. God, help me get out of this desert time. And we try to bring him into where we are. Look at what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, 19. I had read this scripture many times, but never saw this revelation. If in this life only, because I used, I used to quote it, if in this life only I have hope, I would be of all men most miserable. It doesn't say that. It says, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. So in other words, there is even more to Christ than this life. If you only limit him to here and now, you miss out on what he's really all about. He did not create you for you to stay in this world. He created you to be a heavenly citizen and to spend eternity with him. So don't get so bogged down in this life. Here's where I want us to move beyond. I want us to move beyond belief. I want us to move beyond trust. Because if you stay at trust, you stay where you are. Because hope is not about now. Hope is what it is about next. So I want you to trust Him, but I don't want you to stay at trust. I want you to trust Him here while you're hoping for there. I want you to trust Him now while you're hoping for what's next. You see, trust says... You're going to help me get through this. Hope says this is not all there is. Let's move beyond hope, beyond trust. Let's, Let's move into hope. Hope says I've been promised more. There's another chapter to this story. Hope says what I see right now is not what I get. Hope is what helps you put one foot in front of the other. At some point, you and I have to move beyond just believing and start trusting. And at some point, you and I have to move beyond just trusting and start hoping. I love the passage of Scripture, Psalms 25 and 5, that says, Lead me by your truth and teach me, for you are the God who saves me. Watch this. All day long, I put my hope in you. Do you ever sometimes wake up with hope? And then it slowly ebbs through the day? Or maybe you're not a morning person and you wake up in despair. But about 3 o'clock you get a little hope and then it goes away. Paul, The writer of of Psalms said, All day long I'm putting my hope in you. I'm looking forward to what you have for me. I'm going to keep believing. I'm going to keep trusting. But I'm going to start hoping. I love the word hope in the Hebrew means, watch this, to anticipate with pleasure expectation or confidence hope in the hebrew to anticipate with pleasure expectation or confidence that's what i want to see rising in our life today that's how you get joy right there how am i a joyful person man i'm expecting something great to happen in my life well that's not me i'm a pessimist or or i'm a realist you can still have hope in what jesus christ has promised you I'm believing that God is going to breathe hope into your life today. That's what I'm believing, right where you are, no matter what you're walking through. And I know many of you have walked through a lot this week. We had, not only are we walking through this quarantine, but then the storms came through, and there are people that had damage, and people that have, that have lost their power, and people that have lost jobs. And I, I know, I, I can't imagine what you're going through, but I want to tell you who can, the one who created your today and the one who holds your tomorrow. Okay. Put your hope in Him. And I'm believing right where you are today that He's going to breathe hope in your life. Watch this scripture. This is what I'm praying. I'm praying what Paul prayed in Romans 15 and 13. I pray that God, the source of hope, did you hear that? God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in Him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Did you hear those words? He will fill you completely. You will overflow with confident hope. I am praying for abundant hope for you today. Not just a little, not just enough, more than enough. You know, I want you to have more than enough hope because you need to share that hope with someone else today. Can I pray for you? Is that okay if I pray for you? Just nod your head. If that's all right, I'm going to pray for you. Lord, I thank you so much for your word. 
I thank you for your presence that I feel right here. I thank you, God, for your hope that you have given us through your Son, Jesus Christ. I'm praying right now for every person, whatever they're walking through, whatever their issue is, whatever their situation is, that you would breathe hope in their life right now. That, God, they would feel almost a a fresh breath of your presence breathing on them. I speak against every bit of despair. I speak against every spirit of fear and anxiety. I pray for those, God, that feel stuck. They feel like Groundhog Day over and over again. Lord, let them put their hope in you. They believe in you. They trust in you. Now, let hope begin to rise. And God, I pray for those right now that have never even started with the first step. They've never put their faith in you by confessing you with their mouth and believing in their heart. I'm praying for them that you would move on them. If that's you today, I want to give you an opportunity to start the greatest journey you've ever had in your life, the journey with Jesus Christ. Would you just pray this prayer with me? If you've never asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, or maybe you have, but it's been a while and it's stagnant, and you've you've grown cold, it's grown cold, you've moved away from Him, and today you want to recommit your life to Him. You want to once again put all of your hope in Him. Why don't you just repeat after me? Come on, everyone here in the studio, join with me, say, Lord Jesus... Thank you for your love. Thank you that I can put my faith in you. I believe in you. In my heart. And I'm saying it with my mouth. I trust you. And today, I'm putting all of my hope in you. Forgive me of my sins. My pride for doing things my own way. Today, I am yours. I lay myself at your feet. Forgive me of all my sins. Baptize me with your grace. Fill me with your spirit and help me to live an overcoming, abundant and everlasting life with you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Come on, everybody in the studio there at home, why don't you celebrate with these folks who just prayed that prayer. Thank you, Lord. Pastor Jared, I want you to come join me here for just a moment. For those of you that prayed that prayer, uh, Pastor Jared is going to give you some next steps to help you move forward. Absolutely. And if you prayed that prayer for the first time today, we want to celebrate with you. You just made the best decision of your entire life. And we want to connect with you because we may be distanced, but this journey with Jesus is not intended to be done alone. So, so you can actually text to connect. You text the phrase, Hills Connect to 94090. It'll be here at the bottom of the screen. Sends you an online connect card and you can just let us know what God did in your life today. And if you came to give this morning, let me just say, God bless you. It has been amazing. Real people are being really impacted when you give at the hills. You are sowing into good ground and it's making such an incredible difference. So you can actually text to give as well. You text the Hills Enville to 77977 and it'll send you right to our online giving portal. And we just, we can't thank you enough. God bless you as you give today. I love that. We're getting all high tech now. It's pretty cool. The texting and stuff. You know, as, as you're getting ready to give today, I want to read you. I told you last week that we received a whole bunch of emails. And I want to read you some emails that we received from folks that lost their job or had a drastic decline in their income. And Pastor Jared and our team rallied around and we got gift cards to those folks uh, just within days. And that's because of your generosity. Here's one of the emails. Oh my goodness, you guys. I can't put into words how much this means to me. I burst into tears the moment I opened this email and I haven't been able to stop crying since. Many happy, thankful tears. This is truly an answer to prayers. And I'm so thankful to have you as my pastors and the Hills as my church. Thank you so much. I love you all. Here's another one. Thank you. This is going to go to groceries immediately. And this is of so much help. Thank you for your continued prayer and support. Missing you all deeply. Can I read one more? Go for it. Wow. Thank you so much. I'm blown away at how God is meeting our needs right now. I have been using all of my PTO days. And after this week, I will be unpaid until we can resume at my office. Even with the unemployment filed, we will be significantly short in our bills. Going down to one income. And and may see if we can take a month delay in our mortgage. I'm teary and rejoicing that we can use this money to cover our groceries in the coming weeks. We cannot wait to see our Hills family again in person. Love you all, and thank you for adding a God wink 
to a challenging time. Doesn't that feel good? Awesome. To know that you and I are a part of that. We can do a lot more together than we can separately. Amen. So continue to give today. It helps us do what we're doing, and it, but it also helps us help a lot of other people. I want us to come out of this thing strong, and I want us to stay strong in the middle of it, but I want us to come out even stronger. As I've said before, I want to see us roaring when we come out of this. We're so glad you joined us today. Remember, all of you moms, come see us today from 1 to 2. We'll be at the, the old Bellevue, the former Bellevue Theater, which is going to be the new Hills venue. Pastor Chris and I and some of our team will be there. We've got some special gifts for you. Anything else? Did I forget anything? I think you nailed Are it. Are we good? That was awesome. All right. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Make His face shine upon you. And I pray He blows your mind with His blessings this week. We'll see you at Hills Groups all during the week. And we'll see you next week, Sunday, 930 and 11. God bless y'all. Come on, come on, great.